Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the proceedings of two live streams, a total of eight hours of activity, mainly because it wasn't so much activity. We were doing interplanetary transfers and it required a lot of finicky maneuver node adjustments, let's say, and also ion engine burns. Hmm. Anyway, uh, first thing, it turns out that Arthur E. King, from our previous episode, wanted his girlfriend to come along with him to Mercury. So here we are launching Katak uh, to Mercury on a Mercury station. So she is heading out, unfortunately at nighttime, it turned out the launch had to be done. Uh, a nighttime launch to Mercury with the Daenerys uh, Aerospike SSTO, as we can see there. Once again, taking advantage of really large rockets. Heck, they pay a lot of struts for the rockets. They might as well get the rocket they pay for. Anyway, um, so, yes, Arthur proving once again that he's the ultimate high roller as far as this series is concerned. And uh, there we have Katak making orbit. And then it'll be on to the nuclear stage, which has two Timberwind 250 engines. These are pebble bed nuclear reactor engines, and we need to separate off the top fairing there so you can see uh, what is the Mercury station as it were. It's a fairly heavy module, and then we've got the ion engines again, and we'll see how that works. That's gonna be another thing. Now we've got two Kerbals to worry about in separate missions, and this is the transfer burn. This is the mildest burn of all of them. It's about 5,000 meters per second to transfer to Mercury during this window. Mainly the trouble is capturing around Mercury, especially if you're going to use those ion engines, because again, Mercury's orbit is 88 days, whereas the ion engines burn for 23 days, so you can't really do it right at the periapsis. And that's all the fun. So anyway, that's on its way. Uh, I was convinced to send a ISRU scanner to Mercury so that eventually we could do in situ resource utilization, try and find resources on Mercury that could produce fuel so we don't have to carry the fuel to come back. And so I set that up on, uh, there was a small stage and then there's an RD-58 engine which is a kerosene oxygen engine that has five ignitions. Actually I think I set it to the Buran settings. Uh, Buran also had one of those, but it was a more advanced version of the engine. And then we put it on a smaller Timberwind. I think it was a Timberwind 45. So a smaller nuclear engine. And then this is the Kasei rocket with its Sajita boosters launching into Mercury. So at least this time we don't have to use the Aerospike SSTO. Uh, so the boosters are methane and oxygen and the core is hydrogen and oxygen. And I decided to save on fairing mass, so we went with the smaller fairing at the top there, even though it looks awkward. And there's the core running out. We'll need the upper stage to continue on to orbit. There's, the core has five ED6 engines, and this has a single really long nozzled ED6 engine. And they are hydrogen oxygen engines of about 3,000 kilonewton variety. Okay. And there we have the beginning of the transfer burn. And that's the end of that stage. We just used a little bit of it to start the transfer off. That goes off. And then the Timberwind engine. That might be a Timberwind 75. There's a 45, 75, and 250. 45 is 450 kilonewtons. 75, 750 kilonewtons, and 250 is 2,500 kilonewtons. Okay, and that is the end of that burn. So, we had to make an adjustment around Mercury, and I took a look at how much it'd take to capture. You can see that capture burn is really, really big. <laughs> More than 10,000 meters per second, and we have to get into an orbit that the scanner is going to work at. So polar and also relatively low. We can't have a really high apoapsis. So that's going to be interesting. Next, I adapted the Mercury station into a Saturn station because I had two tourists. Again, all these tourists are viewers. The viewers on Twitch earn struts by watching the show and then they pay the struts to go to various locations. The cost, depending on how difficult it is to get to that location. 
and so that will root and Mr. Doobie decide to go to Titan. And I'm trying out various colors on this using the new uh, recoloring UI for procedural parts. And ultimately, we go with silver and green for some reason, and I call it the Kermit Rocket. <laughs> so uh, that is the beginning of the Kermit Rocket there. I think we only get two uses out of it. And I put the Aerospike SSTO engine at the bottom, so it's a very big rocket. These boosters are RD-170s. I wanted specifically to not use the Monument Rocket, but this is close. It's not quite the same. The Monument Rocket is bigger, but this is fairly big. And so we are launching a Saturn station off. The thing is, live streams, you might think, well, you know, you should uh, use smaller rockets and assemble it in space. But for a live stream, that can be very tedious. And the docking takes a lot of time in real solar systems. So that is why I didn't necessarily opt for that. I mean, I've done lots of docking on, and assembly on live streams before. The ISS, the International Space Station assembly that I did was entirely during live streams, so I'm not shy about that, but it is also very quiet during those because I have a lot of thinking to do. Meanwhile, these launches are more spectacular, except in this case where it was in the dark, and since we had the procedural tanks, the procedural tanks are metallic, and so they reflect what's around them, and in this case that's night. <laughs> so the Aerospike SSD of Daenerys it was a uh, texture I made in Blender, so that didn't reflect quite the same. And these, those procedural fairings interior, they're not quite as reflective. But otherwise, if there's no light, the rocket is basically black. Anyway, there is the green finally. I painted it, and unfortunately we didn't get to enjoy it during launch. And so that is Dylar Root and Mr. Doobie in orbit. And this is the transfer. Unfortunately, uh, the timing is not great. I was hoping to get Jupiter to help us over to Saturn, but Saturn's behind Jupiter, so the timing is not wonderful. I, I was taking advantage of a Jupiter window rather than a Saturn window, but that's going to require us to fling them past Saturn orbit. You can see it's going way past Saturn orbit and coming back in, so we have to give them extra supplies for that. Fortunately, there is recycling on their station. The USI modules have a recycler on them. I have to adjust that. I had to adjust that for TAC Life support. So some adjustments needed to be made, but there they are. And you can see a single ion engine cluster at the tail instead of five ion engine clusters. Each cluster has 10 engines, so that's 10 ion engines. And the Mercury ones had 50 altogether. This only had 10 because the orbits are very long, so we don't need to hurry. I may regret that, but we'll see. Next up, I'm sending food, water, and oxygen. Unfortunately, uh, this live stream was during the Apollo 11 anniversary. Yes, we are at that point. We still got a lot of catching up to do in this series. I've got lots of video, don't worry. Uh, we've got lots of this series left to chop up. But um, So there's the Apollo 11 anniversary. So I was listening to the Apollo 11 audio during the live stream, and that would make for very awkward audio editing, so we can't have the stream audio right now. Anyway, so that's a little bit sad, but here we are launching yet another Kermit rocket and that is carrying the supplies, the food, water, and oxygen for them because on their own vessel they had a limited amount and obviously we want to keep them alive. That's really the struggle of this series, right? It's a sandbox series, you go, I mean, what's a struggle, right? You don't have the budget, you don't have to collect science, uh, you know, unlock stuff in the tech tree, none of that business. I use a ridiculously large rockets. It's more about handling food, water, and oxygen, the supplies for all these Kerbals all over the place. We've got some on ISS, some on Mir, now we've got some going to Mercury, some around Mars. Uh, well, they haven't actually captured around Mars yet, I don't think. These guys are going to Saturn, and so we're going to have to take care of all that business and see how we manage logistics on this kind of scale with all these concurrent missions. So that's the main struggle of this. Um, I like to tackle one thing at a time, I guess. So that is the big deal for this one. It's not about the, the career mode stuff, obviously, because we're not in career mode. And there are many other things that we don't need to worry about, like signal. I decided not to have any sort of communication limitations. 
here we are doing a adjustment for Dialer Root and Mr. Doobie. And I decided to adjust the adjustment there because I figured that we could do it for less. And we we're using that single ion, well, I say single ion engine, like I said, uh, single cluster of ion engines. And we can time warp during ion engine birds, thankfully. So that is thanks to KSB Interstellar's plugin. And I'm making use, I made use of its format in order to sort of configure this Lackluster Labs ion engine. And that's why we can do that. So, but it only works during SAS mode. So we have to be on SAS to do that. So we do that and I make another correction plot in order to get to Saturn. Again, we're flinging by Jupiter. Or maybe I, I don't know if I decide to skip Jupiter or not. But anyway, that is the cost there. And now we're doing a burn with Arthur E. King. This is the Mercury mission. And this is just a mid-course correction to hit Mercury. And you can see the result there and a further adjustment. You can see an enormous adjustment there, uh, 5,000 or so. That's because we want to do that outside of Mercury's SOI. Once we get to Mercury's SOI, the ion engine won't have enough time to do anything. So I'm doing a huge chunk outside of Mercury's SOI to bring the apoapsis of its orbit down. Uh, right now it's at Earth level. We need to bring it to Venus level and then ultimately to Mercury level to capture. And so I did some of that outside of Mercury SOI, plotted that. And then I saw how much it would take inside Mercury's SOI. And that was a lot. And that's probably going to be a problem. So here I'm doing the same sort of thing with the return mission, making the mid-course adjustment and then the replots. And that return stage is just a stage. It has to push the capsule that Arthur is currently in back. And Katak will be in because what we put Arthur in is uh, Gemini Cabin. There's room for two as long as they can rendezvous. Him. Anyway, what we have here is a four booster Vulcan rocket or an Energia rocket with an upper stage launching an HTV carrying supplies for our Mir station around the moon. So that's why we're using it. I thought we had uh, done the last launch with uh, Energia style rocket for a while, but it turns out we've got this one. And the HTV we're using here is adjusted. We don't have the unpressurized section saving that mass because we don't have experiments to deliver or anything like that. The unpressurized section on HTV is something that the Canadarm can grab into and pull stuff out of. We don't need that, so I just skipped it. Anyway, so there's the Vesuvius stage and the HTV, and we're just sort of orienting for sunlight there, I think, and then doing a mid-course adjustment here, because again, Mir is in an awkward orbit for us to rendezvous with, and we're not doing this transfer at the optimum time of month to get to it. Uh, there is an optimum time of month to get to it that uh, would allow us to skip some of these, but there's a lot of fuel in the Vesuvius stage, that we can use and I take wanton use of that even though it probably would have boiled off by now it doesn't seem to boil off I didn't uh, add any special qualities to this stage so it didn't boil off that much so it was okay one time when when I think it ought to boil off it doesn't boil off and then when I think it ought not to boil off it does it's just annoying sometimes but anyway so we are making further adjustments from high orbit this so is an inclination change that's why we're doing it high up and we're using an AG-10-190 engine on that. So that's the Space Shuttle OMS engine slash Orion service module engine. And here we are rendezvousing just as the Earth is apparently rising. Of course, there's no real Earth rise. We're just, we're the ones moving around the moon, making it look like it's rising. And the HTV is lining up or modified HTV. And I clear out that one Soyuz there of peoples and supplies uh, a little bit too much, actually, because all we have is a tiny, tiny bit of HTP that was locked in the descent module to push away with. I probably should have kept a little bit more in there. So, yeah, that was a little bit dicey. We barely were able to push that away. That's dubious, but yeah, clearing that port on Kavant 2. I think that's Kavant 2, right? Uh, I, I get my Kavants mixed up. Anyway, maybe it's Kavant 1. But here we are, 
getting to that docking position. It's nice having the earth in the background. And approaching to dock. And that'll be it for this episode. So those were the activities of these two streams, July 12th and July 19th, incidentally. So yes, there's, there's plenty more to come, don't worry. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.